What's up everyone, Jay here with Solo YGO. Welcome to the channel if you're new. All right guys, today we are revisiting 2022 Tin of the Pharaoh Gods again because last time we were unable to pull any Pot of Prosperity whatsoever. Dark Magician Girl, Blue Eyes, Red Eyes. So we're going back in. We got eight more tins, three more packs per tin. So I had 24 mega packs to get through. Let's do this. All right, we're getting straight into it. We are on a hunt because last time we were unable to pull anything too crazy and we want to pull something crazy we need a pot of prosperity pot of prosperity pays for all eight tens keep that in mind and it's short printed as there's all heck as we found out so if we can pull one that'll be really nice Or sorry, not all, not all 12 tins. It pays for like 12 packs. Um, yeah, it'd be crazy. If, well, we only have eight tins, my bad. It doesn't pay for eight tins either. I'm getting numbers confused right now. Diviner of the Herald, good start. That paid for the pack. Each tin costs about 12 bucks because we bought it as a case. And that means each pack is about four bucks. We're on a value hunt. Plus we really like the uh, nostalgic stuff like Dark Magician Girl, Red Eyes, uh, Blue Eyes. So we're going for those as well. And then deck building stuff for the channel decks. At this point in time, we'll play any rarity, so we don't care if it's a common that we can use or, you know, anything. Ash, good value. I think she's sitting at, what, nine bucks? But, you know, Scarcity will do her thing with her. She uh, comes in and out of formats pretty often. More often than not, she's in the format, at least in some way, shape, or form. You guys recall uh, last year when she was at 30 bucks before she got reprinted literally three times, twice as a common and then once in the set as a prismatic. I'm still waiting for her to get reprinted as an ultimate rare. They really dropped the ball when they reprinted the Pearlies and Triple Tactics Thrust. And it's like, wow, those cards are so new. Ash has literally never had an ultimate rare reprint or any high rarity reprint. She's stuck as being a high rarity in her um, Original OG Secret is considered a high rarity, and that's just kind of sad, to be honest. For such a good card, you're telling me she doesn't have a Starlight, a Collector's Rare, an Ultimate Rare, anything? A Quarter Century Seeker Rare? Like, that's just kind of a uh, Konami dropping the ball. The Ruddy Rose Dragon. Remember when that was like 20 bucks when Sword Soul needed it really badly? It was just singular printing out of Lightning Overdrive. Everything Konami does is with purpose, right? Those little sneaky little reprints they put in sets. They know uh, the secondary market exists. They know that uh, people need their cards. And they know that people don't like paying 20 bucks for, you know, cards that shouldn't be that high. So they do what it takes to, you know, get you to buy their sealed product as well. It's good marketing tactics if you ask me. Even better when they short print this dang pot of prosperity. <laughs> Making me go hunt through their product to try and get one. See if I can get one. Ah, Rainbow Bridge Salvation. This card comes in and out of discussion um, as far as being used as a, you know, a searcher for any field spell. Uh, it definitely has implications in certain scenarios, but I think ultimately people have just figured out that. Uh, there's a better way to do things. Now that you have Thrust, you can go to Terraforming and get whatever field spell you need anyways. But I guess it's a free kind of thing that's going on if uh, if you can mill it somehow. Like I, know, I saw Tier Elements playing it last year because they could just mill it freely. You don't really have to do anything extra to get your field spell. But you have to play it in conjunction with um, the Tortoise in that deck. And I think some people are playing it with like the Cobalt Eagle now in certain decks. It's interesting for sure. Planet Patrol, that's one we need to make. 
and Ben, everybody's favorite annoying bird, and Despian Quertus. Great art. Zilch on the value, though. Hey right, guys, I'm calling it. This pack has the pot of prosperity. Trying to get a pot of prosperity in this set is like trying to get a starlight out of any other set. It's kind of crazy how short printed this. Flip Frozen, Ultimate Dragonic Utopic Ray, Masquerade the Blaze Dragon. This card is always annoying to go against when you're getting burned to death trying to play, <laughs> and they do double. Double masquerade, so it's like you can't even play without burning yourself to death. Link into the reins, okay. Not a product of prosperity, but a spell for sure. Um, yeah, Link into the reins. Hopefully, it has its time to shine one day. Decently okay in cyber decks. I was kind of uh, considering playing in prank kids to try and get to. Um, <laughs> the link to doodle doodle do because now we you know we can't really get into the link to so easily without meow meow moo and my moo needs to come back for real though if the adventure package gets hit you know bring it back i'd say it's even probably fine right now i mean dpe is gone because of scythe being gone like there's just that deck doesn't exist from last year anymore Rocks Rose Dragon, I mean, that's another thing that got hit was the uh, Red Rose package. I mean, there's a lot of decks that can come back just because things have been hit. I think the Red Rose can probably come back with, um, you know, Hockey Fiber X being banned, but that's another one I think could come back. But I take a lot of heat when I say stuff like that because it does, <laughs> it is a really strong card still. But my thoughts with that one is just that, uh, you know, Aurora Dawn's band, that was one of the heavily used uh, things for Halky Fibrax. And then um, TG Wonder Magician popping Scythe. Scythe is obviously banned, so Halk has lost two of its most common uses. You know, a generic Link Climber is not the worst, but it is probably bad right now with the Synchron stuff running around. Greater Palmerization. Uh, but once the Synchron deck either is confirmed that it's not as good as we think it is, I think it has, I think it'd be okay, but if it's not like topping regionals, topping YCSs, then we know it's just rogue. Maybe Halky Firebox is what it needs to push it to the top, and wouldn't that help uh, Konami push their objective of selling, selling their latest product, right? Just some thoughts, just some thoughts. Or it could just be Dops that could be completely busted and unfair, like tier zero. I don't know, I don't think Halky Firebox would do that, but I mean that is the reason why Jet Sync brought a lot of cards are able to come back, is because they banned Halky Firebrax. Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, nice. That's a good one for value. Constantly sitting there at the five to ten dollar mark. Hero players absolutely love them, mandatory. At least there's a one or a two of them in the extra deck. Sushi. The Fabled Abank. What's this guy? Looks kind of like Guardian Chimera. Corgius, the Triphasic Dealmon. So he's related to Chim uh, Chimera. What did I just say? Chimera Dragon? Who's the guy from Battle of Chaos? What's his name? I cannot think of it for the life of me right now. Alright, nothing in that one. Come on, guys. This can't be. Uh, you know, this another eight tens of no pot of prosperity. Let's let's get one pot of prosperity. That's all I ask, Konami. Just give me one pot of prosperity in my hand. I was originally hoping to get a playset out of this. I think that dream is long since sailed because there's no way we're coming back to get three right now. Not with how badly you guys short printed this card. 
Not short on beat troopers whatsoever though. Ah, Lord of Heavenly Prison. Another one. We'll take it though. Such a great card. Uh, unless you freely set any spell or trap. But it is banished during the end of the next end phase. So it better be something that's, you know, going to get out really quickly and not be lingering more than a turn. Remember I tried to set goes and match off of it. I learned that the hard way when my opponent was like, oh, it's banned now, or it's banished now. It's like, oh shoot, I didn't read that part of the effect. I was new to playing my Elvich deck at the time. Winter Cherries, that always comes in and out of play. We got another Otasha Damashi. This card looks so cute. Uh, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Nice. Good value, good staple. Ghost Bell got cratered off the market last year when um, Despia came onto the scene. It also hit the doodle do for Prank Kid, so there's a lot of uh, reasons to play it. Remember when it was like 10 to 15 bucks even just for the Ultra? You always gotta stay ready with your staples, keep a few play sets of each, especially when they're you know affordable like they are right now. In most cases for a lot of these hand traps. We got another Luber. okay. Speaking of Despia, we got the Luber. Gukin Suship, that frog looking guy. Judgment the Branded. B Trooper. Meow Cyclic. Flounderies in the Scary Sea. This never sees play, huh? I remember reading this before. It says, when your opponent would special summon a monster, while you control a face-up tribute summon monster, and no special summon monsters, negate the summon. And if you do return that monster to the hand, also for the rest of the turn, your opponent cannot special summon. And conduct, and can conduct up to three normal summon sets this turn, not just one. You can only activate one Flundery Scarcity. This card looks really good, actually. <laughs> I don't know why nobody plays it, but I don't know. Maybe it's... Yeah, I don't know. Seems really good in theory. Not me all special in front of the turn. Oh, wait, the blue eyes white dragon, nice. This is one that we were been hunting for. God, this must be short print or something because we did not pull any of these. We finally got one. This one's really sturdy. It's got th this is a thick card. Okay. Blue eyes, white dragon. The legendary dragon is a powerful engine of destruction, virtually invincible. Very few have faced the awesome creature and lived to tell the tale. My favorite one, of course, is the Dark Magician, the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. I have no idea what the Red Eyes one says, if I'm being very honest. Let's see if we can pull it so we can read it, though. Rock stars here. Star mine. Arm dragon level three. We're gonna make that deck for sure. Another Empen. See if we get it. Next card. Ah, we got ZC Ascendancy. This is our first one of these, and this card is a uh, really bad as far as value goes. Was that for a Utopia deck or something? Probably right. We'll make that deck too. We got our ultimate rare Utopias. I'm a big fan of uh, Utopia, not as a deck, but as a just an individual Xyz monster. Just because that was around the time I was quitting Yu-Gi-Oh, so I was still young. Uh, XYZ so I just been introduced to Yu-Gi-Oh, and um, I bought the Utopia structure deck like three times to get him. Being able to negate attack was just really good. Um, well, it was just generic level four, right? Two of them. Oh, 
Come on. Another Underworld Goddess, okay. We're getting some decent prismatics now. All right guys, we have eight more of these. We have eight more chances to gain Pot of Prosperity. We cannot be let down after 16 tens, which is 48 packs. You're telling me 48 packs? We're gonna go zero for 48 on Pot of Prosperity? Come on, man, that doesn't sound like very good odds. Um, it's not just short sprint. It's not just short print in that case, it's majorly short printed. Like I said, it's virtually Starlight Rare. It's virtually a Corset Ultimate Rare from back in the day. It's virtually a Quarter Secret Century Rare. A quarter Century Secret Rare, excuse me. If it's gonna be that hard to pull a Pot of Prosperity out of some tins. Another Link in the Reigns. Seven more chances. We are currently, between the two openings that we've done on this set this year, we are currently 0 for 41 on Pot of Prosperity. That's really bad. We're also 0 for 41 on Dark Magician Gold and Red Eyes, which are two ones that we also wanted. So, I mean, that goes to say something about those cards as well. We are not short on Ashes, Underworld Goddesses, Alibers. That stuff is obviously not short printed whatsoever. Um, it's smart on them to not short print Ash either, though, because... The Prismatic looks very nice first and foremost, plus, you know, that card's always popular throughout time, and um, I doubt Konami wants to see that card have a $30 price point again. Like, that's crazy, the uh, Salamangrate Structure Deck had a $30 common, the Biru Good Value, and Drytron Mu Beta Fafner. Shout out to Monty and his Drytrons. Whoa, look at the back of this text box. It looks really dirty. Uh, maybe a print printing error of some sort? Not necessarily a uh, misprint, I don't think. But like the text is kind of smudged. There's a bunch of black behind the, um, the gray. Interesting. Hey right, guys. Six packs left. Let's do this. At this point, Pot of Prosperity, you know, if we get it, we get it. Maybe, uh, maybe I should stop wanting it so much because I'm probably jinxing it. And let's just see if we can pull anything cool. Any cool staples, at least. Denier, good for the hero strategy. Valeria, Daphine, Stardust Trail, Dark Infant at Ignister, good for the Ignister strategy, and Albion the Branded Dragon, alright, it's a really cool looking card to be honest, oh, like I said before, all of the Destiny cards just look so good, huge fan of their artwork, if I was actually a good artist myself, I would try and draw them, but I'm not, so... We'll just admire other people's artwork for now. Planet Patrol. Oh, we got a first Snow. It came as a rare. This card was seeing some uh, use during Cash Tier format. Just having a way to flip things face down for the opponent. Speaking of plenaries of Embin. Next card, uh, branded opening, nice. That's not a bad one, actually. Um, it's always needed for the branded cards. It's definitely three of. So we can at least sell that one off because we actually have a prismatic place at ourself for our deck, so. All right. Four packs, four more chances. We are currently 0 for 44 on Pot of Prosperity, Dark Magician Girl, and Red Eyes. It's kind of crazy. Watch there just be one mega pack of nothing but Pot of Prosperities. Complete 18 pack of them. That'd be pretty crazy. Ghost Bell. Okay. Good, good staple. Who's a fan of the Ghost Sisters, by the way? 
Not just for their playability, but for their artwork and all that. I think I am for sure. Four, five, six. Not to mention most of them are zombies. It does help that a Ghost Ogre is actually a psychic though, because for me, I love that with Emergency Teleport. Perfect level three psychic tuner. It's kind of, you know, a match made in heaven. Uh, speaking of how key firebacks are referring back to it actually, um, I used to use that in my Sword Soul deck. Be able to get Halky Firebrax off of the Itelli with um, Ghost Ogre. And also, Ghost Ogre was really good for the format in general because at the time there was a bunch of adventure stuff. So you can hit the uh, Faithful Adventure with it, or you can bring it out with Itelli as an interruption because Ghost Ogre also gets its effect while it's based upon the field, which is often overlooked. It's not just from the hand, it's also from the field. Uh, it is banished during the end phase though if you don't if you don't use its effect so but then also you can use it for its tuner capabilities plus 10 e plus uh ghost over equals baron that card is just went really hard in the deck back in the day unfortunately it just uses a lot of slots and if there's better hand traps in the format um it's just not very practical red eyes black dragon nice we got one finally we'll put that right next to blue eyes oops Sorry, red eyes. Uh, and this is the last pack, guys. We have no more tins after this. We're out. This is the last we had in storage. So we are currently 0 for 47 on Pot of Prosperities. Can we get it with this very last pack? Or a Dark Magician Girl? I take that too, to be honest. Oh, and Red Eye says a ferocious dragon with a deadly attack. Come on, Konami, that's very underwhelming compared to Blue Eyes and, uh, you know, Dark Magician. Or does it say, is it different for Red Eyes B Dragon? Because this is Red Eyes Black Dragon. I think they're two different. I mean, they're meant to be pretty much the same card, but they might have different texts. I'll have to look into that. All right, guys, we'll start reading them here. Despian Comedy. Basil Rose Shoot. That's definitely a needed one up for that Red Rose package I was talking about. Zexolus and Trust. Stairway to a Fabled Realm. Psychic Razor Laser. Well, that kind of rolls off the tongue nicely. Psychic Razor Laser. Eraser Laser. Okay. Magicy Dragon Andra Beam. Chronomaly Vimana. Gunkin Suship Sherry. ZS Arm Sage. Reinforcement of the Army's Troops. Stardust Trail, move to the next one. And Incredible Please of the Verge, which is actually our first one in 48 packs as well. That's kind of crazy. This is not short printed, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, the guy, guys that pretty much does it. Show off the two that I actually gave a crap about. Blue Eyes and Red Eyes, always nice to see these guys. Alright guys, well if you enjoyed the um, opening and you've made it this far and you're not subscribed, you think we've earned your, your subscription, go ahead and hit the button so we can see you in future videos. This is Jay with Solo YGO signing out. Peace out.